Stuff here to fill another trunk. Just get it closed. Oh, we got something. Open it. Close it. Open it. Close. <sighs> Bag all packed? Yeah. Lucky I put on weight. Oh, don't sound like such a martyr. Do you know how I've been working? You don't realize what it is to send an only daughter off to college. I think I do. I got the bank statement. Oh, well, Dad, <laughs> I forgot this slip. No, sir. I've opened and closed that plastic bag ten times in the last hour. It stays closed. Oh, please, Daddy, it's my best slip. I... Hmm. Whoever's listening, stay single. <laughs> oh, Mom, where's Janet? Why isn't she here? We're going to be late for the train. Oh, don't worry, dear. She'll be here. Gosh, how I wish I were going with you. John, do you realize that since you and I are at Midwestern, 20 years have passed? 22. I bet you won't find anything changed at the Triu house. I bet there's the same swing on the patio where your father got on his knees and asked me to marry him. One knee. John, do you remember the night I announced our engagement? How your fraternity brothers marched in the body to the Triu house and serenaded me? Don't remember that. John, how could you possibly forget a thing like that? I put my mind to it. Oh, John. He's just kidding. Come up for a second. I'm almost ready. Oh, wear my hat and coat. Honest, I'm getting so jittery. Just think in a few days, Liz will be a try you. Just like I was. Here you are. Hi, everybody. Oh, oh man, man. I decided to sleep with single oh, thoughts. I'm getting back on Janet, I've made a reservation for you, Liz, at the Murray Arms Hotel. I hope your folks won't mind. Well, no. Why should they? Well, it's the most expensive hotel in town. But it makes such a good impression on the sororities if you stay there during rushing. After all, it'll only be for one week. Then you'll both be living at the Triu house. Oh, yes, if they take me. Oh, don't worry. Mother's written to Cookie Clark. She was her roommate at Triu. And she's house mother there now. Oh, come on. That's Danny. Let's be a half hour early. Don't forget my makeup case, Mom. Suddenly, I feel awful. I don't know if I want our little girl to leave us. Oh, look at it this way, dear. You're not losing a daughter. You're gaining a sorority, sister. <laughs> Come on, now. You've gained weight. Like fun, you hate to say it. How does the house look? Swell. You know, we're painting it. You're just in time to do the kitchen. Babs, I'm dying of envy. You're a... You can have it. I never want to look a statue in the face again. Carry your bags, miss? Are you kidding? Hey, wait a minute. I'll carry you. 
Carry his bag, sir. I bet you didn't make a reservation any place, did you? No. I didn't think it was necessary. Oh, sister, opening week of school? <laughs> Boy, are you in trouble. Okay, okay. Go on, get in. We'll find you someplace. Oh, one every year. it official. We're at college. Well, the station looks just like Mom said. Broken down, but I don't know. Homing. Back to Miss. The Murray Arms Hotel, please. All right. Like wait, we might have something later. I want to get a room. I don't know what I can. Elizabeth Erickson and Janet Shaw, we have a reservation. Oh, yeah. You asked for a double. I'm sorry, it's the first week of school and we're jam-packed. We put a double bed into a single room. Would you girls mind? Thank you very much for your cooperation. Room 204. Boy, I'm awfully sorry. If you'd like to wait, we'll do something for you if we can. We just don't know it yet. Are you sure? Well, you better check on it. My mother sent the trunk three days ago. Yes, I'll wait. Oh, I might have known if Mom had anything to do with it. Wonder where sorority row is. Let's take a walk before bed and see what the Triu house looks like. It looks beautiful. Take my mother's word for it. And that walk isn't such a good idea. What if they should see us? Mom says we shouldn't appear too anxious. What have you got to worry about? Your mother was a triu. You're a legacy. They have to take you. Hello. Oh. Well, when it does get here, would you send it right up, please? Oh, thanks. Oh, why couldn't I bring some dresses with me instead of just slips and blouses? I'll be a fine sight going through rushing with just this suit I've got on. What's this? It's a cot. Will you take it? I hate phones. Hello? Say, I'm afraid we're in a spot. Do you mind if we put someone else in with you? Oh, well, uh, just a minute. I'll ask Miss Erickson. They want to know if we mind if they put someone else in with us. Well, tell them we mind like anything. I'm sorry. It's impossible. This is a single room as it is. Thank you very much for cooperating. Hiya. Here. I'm lousy with quarters. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Spent a weekend in Las Vegas for a head in here. Sure gave those slot machines a beating. What's your name? Oh, I'm Liz Erickson. I'm Janet Shaw. My name's Adelaide Swanson. I'm from Tucson. What do you think of this place? Kind of looks like we got the little girl's room. <laughs> yes, it is a little small. Heck, I'm only 18. I haven't stopped growing yet. I don't mind telling you I didn't want to come east, but my mom thinks it's the only place to finish her education. Guess she's tired of me smelling like a horse. Are you going to live in a dorm, or do you want to pledge a sorority? Don't know. Don't care either way, just as so long as it doesn't interfere with my riding or my tennis. All I know is I want to get out of this hotel room, but quick. Oh, no. Nobody else gets in here. We've grown very fond of each other. Hello? Is this Elizabeth Erickson? This is Marge Colby at the Tri U House. We just wanted to say hello. Is your room comfy? Thank you. It's more than that. <laughs> We're dying to meet you. Of course, it's against the rules to issue any invitations before tomorrow, but we're expecting you for the opening tea. Are you free? Swell. Until tomorrow. Chelsea, a rooming house? May I speak to Miss Dorothy Crockett, please? Thank you. Dorothy Crockett, this is Marge Colby at the Tri U House. We just wanted to say hello. Is your room comfy? Until
do you think of it, Marge? I think the humming was a little matter of fact. Humming should have more feeling. It impresses the Rushies. Can we go to bed now, Mary? I'm tired. I think that will be all for tonight. Unless our Russian chairman has something to say to us. I just wanted to say you've been real swell, fellas. I've had marvelous cooperation from everyone, and the plans for the party sound simply grand. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, did I miss something? Casey, you know very well that no member, especially a senior, is excused from these rushing meetings. Oh, 10,000 pardons, Grand Eminent Sister. It slipped my insignificant mind. And we don't need any of your sarcasm. We've all been working our tails off, and you're setting one stinking example for the sophomores, I must say. You're fine 50 cents. Anybody got change for a dollar? <laughs> oh, Mary. Yes, Dallas. Seeing Casey here has made me realize there is one thing, perhaps, that needs some stressing. Now, we all know how important clothes are during rushing. We try yous have the reputation for being the best dressed house on the campus. I think that I, in my little way, have had something to do with that. Well, thank you, Hattie Carnegie. Anyway, I just want to say, let's not grow careless this week. Let's live up to that reputation. Smart and simple. And easy on the costume jewelry. Casey, pet, I think you ought to know that Indian silver went out, as a matter of fact, with the Indians. <laughs> Paris sets the style now, not Albuquerque. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Casey would stay in her room all during rushing week? I'll do better than that. I'll wear a beard and dark glass. <laughs> as usual, one of Casey's remarks officially ends the meeting. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Zoology three hours, English lit three hours. That should keep you busy enough the first semester. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Mm. Liberal arts. Sit down, Miss Erickson. Thank you, Professor Blake. No, not Professor Blake. Not even Instructor Blake. Just a senior student. The authorities thought because of my advanced age that I could help freshmen pick their courses. Oh. Oh, you were in the war. Mm -hmm. Up to my neck. I see you haven't designated a science. Must I? I'm not very good at science. <laughs> it's required for freshmen. It'll be over in a year. What science would you like? What science have you got? <laughs> On hand, we have chemistry, physics, zoology. Zoology. That's where you have to cut up a frog. <laughs> Sounds so messy. Haven't you got something a little less... Uh, uh, what about all these new exciting things that are going on now? Atoms, neutrons? No, no. Not for you. Oh. Botany, how do you like that? Well, I like it fine. Point is, how do you like it? <laughs> this is somewhat outside my province, but I'd like to ask you something. Just why did you come to college? Well, my father says I'm too young to get married and too old to hang around the house. <laughs> well, that's a better reason than most. Why'd you pick Midwestern? My mother went to Midwestern. Oh? She was a try you. Well, I got a bet on that. As a matter of fact, my mother met my father here. <laughs> afraid we can't guarantee you anything like that. <laughs> Come on, we'll find you a real interesting major. Yes, let's. This may surprise you, but I was awfully good at languages. Frankly, it does surprise me. You girls had better get on another line, or at least find some chairs for yourselves. Hey, but I'm awfully hot in this suit. It's the only thing I had to wear. My trunk hasn't arrived yet. Here, let me take your coat. Oh, thanks. Oh, dear. I wish Helen wouldn't leave her sweater around like this when we need the room for coats. Helen Brown's head girl's cheerleader. That's quite an honor, you know. Really? Hi, Jenny. Hi, June. That's Jenny Barker. Maybe you know her. Senator Barker's daughter. Of course, Senator Barker. Oh, Liz, this is Dallas Pruitt. Liz Erickson. Oh, hello, Liz. I've heard so much about you. 
How do you like our little college? Well, I like it much better when my trunk gets here. I'm simply going mad with nothing to wear but this old suit. If my experienced eye doesn't deceive me, this gorgeous little bag is a correct. Yes, Pop? Mother picked it out for me in New York. Mm. Well, let's have some tea and meet Mother Clark. She's the youngest house mother on campus. Cookie Clark? Oh, you know her? Well, I've never met her, but she was Mother's roommate right in this house. In fact, she and Mother... Now, look here, Dorothy. Some sorority sister of mine... your headache? I thought you were in bed. I've still got the headache, thank you. Some sorority sister of mine stole all the aspirin, well, and I... Casey Krauss, Liz Erickson. Hi. Listen, Dottie, if that aspirin isn't returned in five minutes, I'm coming down to the living room, bathrobe and all. Stay here. I'll get you. Oh, by the way, don't let me discourage you. I'm a senior, and I'll be out of here by June. Excuse me. Well, there's no use apologizing for her. There's one in every sorority. <laughs> I think it's peachy about your mom and Mother Clark being so chummy. Well, that practically makes you and Mother Clark blood relatives, which, incidentally, isn't a bad thing to be around this house. <laughs> Family know the craze. Well, 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 well. Mother Clark, may I present Elizabeth Erickson. Elizabeth Erickson, Olive Erickson, Elizabeth. Yes, Mrs. Clark, how do you well, do? Well, 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 well. I received a long chatty letter from your mother just this morning. She's very proud of you, my dear. Oh. And she gave me very special instructions to take care of her little girl. Father talks about you all the time. Cookie, 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 that's all we hear around the house. Father says it's like being married to two women. Well, 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 well. Mother Clark, I'd like you to meet Ellie Stokes. Where are you staying in town? <laughs> Mrs. Coolidge's rooming house. Oh, that's a very nice place. Poor Jenny. Stuck with that squirrel. Who is she, do you know? Ruth Gates. Oh, I can hardly wait till Dallas gets a look at that sack she's wearing. Ruth Gates. Oh, God, she's a legacy. I can't get over this weather. It's Indian summer, don't you think? Yes, it is warm. Well, the least I can do is help Jenny out. Oh, Mary, I don't believe you've met Ruthie Gates. Mary's the head of the house. Hello, Ruth. Oh, how do you do? Oh, do get up. Oh. oh, I'm terribly sorry. Well, don't bother with it, dear. The, the maid will clean it up. Excuse me. I've got to get clean up. Excuse me, please. Was she a friend of that girl's? Oh, no. No, she's my best friend. A wonderful girl. Go on explaining to people that my trunk isn't here yet. There's nothing wrong with that suit. You could get married. Yeah, I'm probably also going to be buried in it. Hey, maybe that's my trunk. I'll meet you down in the lobby. Hello? Speaking? Hello, this is Joe Blake. Oh. I thought you were my trunk. <laughs> Not exactly. I helped you make out your schedule the other day, remember? Oh, Professor Blake. No, not Professor, just... <laughs> Never mind, how are you? Fine, except I'm due any minute at the Kappa Kappa Delta house for dinner. Kappa Kappa Delta, let's see. That stringy leg of lamb, canned peas, two-toned ice cream, mints, and a dimitant. Oh, that's just what we had last night at the Gamma Omicron house. Where are you going tomorrow night? Let's see. Five muse. Stringy leg of lamb, two-toned ice cream, etc. Any bets? <laughs> Anyhow, curfew at sorority dinners is 10. How's about me meeting you outside the Kappa house and buying you a Coke? Why? Is there anything wrong with my schedule? Not a thing. This call isn't in the line of duty. It's on my own as a man. <laughs> as an older man. Okay. If you don't mind my wearing the same old suit I had on last time. My trunk's lost. Well, I'll be wearing the same old suit you saw me in, and I never had a trunk. Okay. Bye. to me. We 
he had pineapple sherbet instead of two-toned ice cream. <laughs> Those Kappas are getting more radical each year. If they keep this up, they're going to be investigated. What fraternity are you? None. Oh. I'm an independent. You can break your date if you like. Don't you believe in fraternities? Well, to a 28-year-old who spent six years in the Army, the whole thing seems a little silly. As a matter of fact, it seems a whole lot silly. But don't let me influence you. You're just the right age for all this nonsense. Oh, you haven't got a chance. I was brought up on Tri-U. Mother used to say, if you're a good girl and do as I say, you'll be a Tri-U, too. That's how she got me to eat turnips and drink milk and magnesia mixed with orange juice. <laughs> Pop says he remembers Mom at college. Oh, there were times she was plenty miserable. But now, 20 years later, every moment was a happy one. Every sorority, sister and angel. <laughs> Suppose you had the usual father and daughter talk before you left. About what? Men. Why should we talk about men? Are you kidding? A girl that looks like you? As soon as the word gets around, all the registered wolves will be breathing right down your neck. Oh, don't worry about me. I can handle anybody. Grab my arm. Just grab it. <laughs> There's nobody going to grab your arm. Quite an arm at that. <laughs> but, Mother, I'm desperate. I just know the trunk is lost. Oh, you should see the looks Dallas is giving me. The same suit four times in a row. Now, darling, I'm sure the trunk will get there any minute. I sent it off myself. Well, what will I wear tomorrow night? It's the tri use formal dinner. Oh, dear, this is terrible. I tell you what. You go right down to Simonson's, buy yourself the prettiest evening dress they have, and have the bill sent to your father. Hey, hey, hey. They off that charge account stuff. And listen, Olive, you've been on that phone 20 minutes. Oh, hush. It's after 6 o'clock. Liz? Yes, Mother. Yes. Janet's fine. Yes, I think they like her. Cookie? Oh, yes, she's still a little heavy. Oh, much heavier than you are, dear. finally got here. Oh, but it hasn't. I've opened a charge at Simonson's downtown. Mother's gonna have an awful time with Dad when he finds out. How about it? I don't dance with girls. It ruins your technique. Well, then you want to wrestle? Time for the sweetheart song. All right, I'll get ready. selfless, but not unmindful of the golden ore that lies buried within herself. A triu is not one, but many. A triu lives by the unspoken rule of unspoken love. A triu is always patient with those less fortunate than herself. A triu asks nothing but to be true to her destiny. A try you is a try you. Lovely. Now run along home, tumble in bed, sweet dreams to you. Hurry upstairs, cover your head, sweet dreams to you. Sweet dreams to every try you. Me. Can't 
I can't wait till I hit the sack. Oh, how can you think about sleep? They're voting on us. Maybe right now. I close my eyes all night. The minute my head hits the... What are you doing here? Got a date with Liz. I have no date with you. Well, you have now. You got a date with three girls, wise guy. We came together and we're sticking together. Yeah, Eddie, I wouldn't think of going to the jug room without you. Who'd pay for the drinks? For a fellow with a lousy backhand, you're pretty fresh. <laughs> anyway, a guy his age can't handle three of us. Come on, let's get a cab. Oh, no, no. The four of us can have a lot of fun together. We... Guess I didn't sound very convincing, did I? No, you didn't. You better come along quiet. No, no, I want to try it again. No, no, the four of us can ha have a lot of fun <laughs> together. I guess in the East, nobody says good night. Gee, just think of it. That bell is a hundred years old. And four minutes fast. Taxi! dollars right now to hear a coyote. Oh, you. I thought you sang it better last year. It was a beautiful song, beautifully sung, and you're not going to spoil this moment for me. Uh, you take Adelaide. There's a girl with the right attitude. She's taking all this hanky-panky right in stride. Don't catch her going around starry-eyed and her mouth hanging open. You're not making even a tiny little dent. There are a lot of good things about sororities. All right. Go ahead. Elaborate on your theme. Well, even with all the hanky-panky, a sorority is such a big part of college life. Why should I miss it? Well, you know, when I was a kid, I was always jealous of the boy next door because he had the measles, and I didn't. I, I didn't see why I had to miss it. I don't see the connection between measles and sororities. Well, but there is, believe me. But I don't think I'm bright enough to explain it to you. If a sorority wants you, especially a good one, it gives you a wonderful feeling of belonging. Isn't it natural to want to belong? What about all the clubs, lodges, associations, brotherhoods, ladies' auxiliaries? Gee, I'm out of breath. Well, what about them? Oh, I guess I'm not bright enough to explain it to you. All right, so I'm silly. Then why do you bother with me? We've had four dates this week. And tomorrow night makes five. You shouldn't have told me. I like being surprised. Well, I didn't pay much attention to Peggy Crane one way or the other, but it seems to me that just a henna rinse is a flimsy reason to keep a girl out. Well, if Casey's for Peggy, I withdraw my support. I'll blackball right along with Mary Marilyn and Maybell. Well, we might as well take a vote on it. Does anyone want to blackball Peggy Crane? Mm-hmm. Who's next, Marsh? Adelaide Swanson. What are you fellas? Oh, she'd be a breath of fresh air around here. Then somebody close the window, quick. She didn't seem to be a sorority type somehow. I can't understand how she got this far. We've had a note on Adelaide from an alum in our hometown. She says Adelaide's mother operates a million dollars worth of ranching property in Arizona. She thinks Adelaide would have much to offer. To be perfectly honest, I'll admit I didn't get to know her very well. Of course, you can't tell a thing about people during rushing. You can from where I'm sitting. Well, does anyone want to blackball Adelaide Swanson? All right, Adelaide Swanson makes 11. Sit tight, sisters. Ruth Gates. Oh, oh I said to look exactly. Next. She's Next. the bird. Next. 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 Now, girls, girls, please, you know how I hate to interfere, but Ruth is a legacy. Her mother, she's dead now, may the Lord rest her soul, was a dear, sweet girl and a fine example of Triu. After all, we do have a tradition about legacies. Casey was a legacy. We took her and look what happened. Well, this sorority's gotten rich on my 50 cent fines. Well, look, what are we wasting time for? The girl's absolutely hopeless. No poise, no personality. I wouldn't even let her in the back just door. Just a second, just a second. I agree with everything that's been said about Ruth. There's no doubt about it, she's a sad sack. But she's probably been brushed off ever since she was a kid. And if we reject her now, well, you can just cross off the rest of her life. That's not our problem, Casey. But we can do things for...
for this girl. Isn't that what sororities are for? Look, we've got a for chance here. For heaven's sakes, Casey, we can only take 15 girls. We can't do any welfare work. No, I think Casey has a point. At least we ought to discuss it. Actually, girls, the pledging period is just really a trial period. You girls can do wonders for Ruth. Her mother was very shy, too, and she turned out beautifully. I think we owe it to Ruth at least to pledge her. Try her. I know I'm being sentimental about the past, but it would please me so much, so very much. Oh, look, I won't stand in the way of the girl being pledged. But let's get one thing straight right now. Unless she changes, and I don't believe in miracles, I'm never going to allow her to become initiated. Let's have no mistake about that. Well, that's fair enough. Thank you, Dallas, dear. That's all I ask. Any black balls? Well, here's one legacy we're not going to fight about. I guess we're pretty unanimous about Liz Erickson. Count me, and she's creamy. Say, how does one get to look like that, anyway? Oh, I'll confess I was a little worried about her when I saw her with the same suit on five days in a row. But did you see that dream she had on tonight? Well, I guess we're all sold on Liz, right? Put her name down, Marge, and let's keep going. What do we do about that girlfriend of hers? What girlfriend? That Janet. They're practically never apart. Maybe Liz won't take our bid if we don't take Janet, too. Oh, she struck me as... How many have we decided to ask already? Thirteen. That leaves room for only two more. We've got to be careful from now on in. I know two other girls who are must. They come before Janet with me. Oh, look, what's the harm if one year we take 16 girls instead of only 15? What do we have to limit ourselves for? Every other house on the campus takes... We're not every other house. Anyhow, how much do we know about Janet's family and her background? We can't afford to take... Now, let's not get on the subject of families and backgrounds. We've got quite a few skeletons in our own closet. What about our own dear Mrs. Richards and her apartment houses in Indianapolis? Wasn't she fined a stiff sum by the OPA for violating their ceiling? Didn't she nearly go to jail? Casey Krause, how dare you? That's enough out of you, Casey. You're fined 50 cents. Now listen, nobody's going to shut me up. I want to go. Go. I May Johnson. Thank you. Patricia Riley. Thank you. Lynn Hippenstall. Thank you. Virginia Gray. Dora Hanley. Excuse me. I was wondering if there could be some mistake. I mean, if I got all my cards. What's the name, please? Lynn Hippenstall. Just a moment, Miss Hippenstall. Well, Miss Hippenstall, everything seems to be in order, but we'll check if you'll come back later in the day. Thank you. Elizabeth Erickson. Evelyn Hall. Grace Ibsen. Catherine Hood. Hi. Where's Janet? She said she was going to pick up her cards right after a 9 o'clock class. Gee, it's a quarter to 11 now. Maybe she had a 10 o'clock. Oh, I'm sure she hasn't. She'll be here. How'd you do? Try you. And some others. How about you? It's the darndest thing. You never saw so many cards. What makes me so popular? Oh, Ed, that's wonderful. You're taking Try You, of course. Nope. I've thought it over. I'm not pledging any of them. You're not? No, too much social stuff. Too many phony smiles and that singing, singing. I'm going to Hyler Hall. Why, I can step right out of my room onto six tennis courts. Oh, it's not all just singing. What about the girls? What about the beautiful friendships you make? What's the matter with the girls in the dorm? Are they second-class citizens or something? Can I make friends with them without all that singing? Oh, Janet, where have you been? Oh, around. How did you do? Two? No, not try you. Sometimes there's a mistake. If you go back... There's no mistake. I've been back. Did you get Phi Pi? Omega Chi? Delta Mu? Yes. 
and Kaeda. Well, so did I. Then all we have to do is decide, Delta Mu or Kaeda, well, they're both just as good as try you. I'm going to Hyler Hall, and if you two had any sense, you'd come with me. Oh, Adelaide. Janet, darling, what do you think? Personally, I, I say Delta Mu. No, you take try you. Well, don't be silly. We're going to be together. You know very well that Delta Mu is not near as good as try you. It's a goon sorority. You want try you. Take oh, it. Oh, it's not so bad. Besides, we, we made an agreement. Oh, it's a kid's agreement. Just talk. We didn't mean it. I meant every word. Honestly, I want to be. Please, Liz, stop it. can't stand anymore. I've got an 11 o'clock class. Oh, Janet, don't be afraid. Go. Yeah? Who? Yeah, she's here. Who's calling? Just a second. It's for you, the express agency. Your trunk's here. Hello. Oh, fine. Well, you send it right up to the hotel. No. No, just a minute. Hang on, will you please? Just a minute. Oh, Ed. What should I do? I'm afraid you're on your own, kid. I guess, I guess you'd better send it right over to the Triu house, please. Thank you. I want to say once again how happy we are to have our new pledges with us tonight. I think we have the cutest pledge class on campus, and we're awfully proud. We want you to feel right away that this is home. Now, we have certain rules. I suppose we really ought to mention the rules. Meals paid quarterly, and the maids clean twice a week. You'll be told of your pledge duties tomorrow. Incidentally, a week from tonight, we're entertaining the faculty club. And in just about a month, Lambda Psi Xi, that's absolutely the top fraternity on campus, holds its annual dinner for our pledges. I'm sure you're all going to make a wonderful impression. Now, those of you who want to go to bed, good night and sweet dreams. The rest of us are going down to the jug room for a little celebrating. Good night. Bye. Well, is the beautiful heartwarming pledging ceremony over? Why, weren't you here? I always skip it. I throw up so easily. Oh, Casey, Casey, Casey Cross, that'll cost you another 50 cent fine. Come on. I'll need a new dress for that lamb to dinner. Would you help me pick it out? You look so Oh, smart. sure, but I think Dallas knows more than I do. She's so smart. Hi. Hi. What are you two looking so glum about? Where's Janet? We just come from seeing her off. She's gone home. Gone home? Yep. Left school. Gone home. Why would she quit? Why would she go home? There's always a lot of casualties pledge night. But she... Why... Oh, this is awful. I, I feel so... <laughs> All right, it isn't the end of the world. It's all my fault. I did this to Janet. We promised each other. We made an agreement. Now, wait a minute. School. We'd never be separated. It can't be that bad. We went all through grade school, all through high school together. You've got to get hold of yourself. You're building this thing way up oh, out of no. proportion. Janet's life is ruined, and now I'm you responsible. Listen to me. Janet was an idiot to let a bunch of silly girls drive her home. Her life isn't ruined. In six months, she'll see how ridiculous it all was, and she'll come back here. She'll go somewhere else. She'll be a much more sensible, much happier girl. So let's put an end to all of these lamentations and breast beatings. 
I still have the feeling pretty awful. No, you're not. However, I just don't think you're very bright, that's all. And that's all? That's all. I'm glad you think I'm only stupid. I guess I didn't come prepared to cry. Have you got a hanky? Yes, but you use a Kleenex. I do my own laundry. You know, your eyes look better swollen. I bet you're just crazy about my red nose. Color's fine. Tilt's a little too much for my taste. Outside of that, I find nothing to criticize. You know, it, it's a big help having someone around to turn to. Yeah, badly. Well, turning to a man is different from turning to a woman. And better? And better. Uh, come on. I haven't finished my coffee. me that I've had a snootful? Not unless it was called to my attention. That's the way it's with Chad. That's the way it's with me. Who's Chad? I don't remember meeting him. Chad Kern's my roommate. He's not here tonight. He's got better things to do with his time. Oh. Excuse me. I'm afraid they're an awful mistake. I had to try something to make you look like a woman. What's happened? They slipped. Oh, look, turn around and I'll see what I can do. Liz, hold on to this strap and I'll try to work a miracle. Just let her alone, Dottie. Let her be herself. I mean, let you be yourself and look at you. No, I'm very grateful to Dallas for what she's trying to do. Oh! Excuse me, I uh, forgot it was ladies' night. Isn't that just like Chad? Skips dinner, then shows up clobbered. I suppose that's part of his charm. Charm that always eluded me. So that's Chad. It's hard to tell when Chad's clobbered. He holds his liquor so well. All the landers do. It's in their bylaws. I think I've got a pretty good idea where Chad must have been. He's supposed to have a girlfriend on Salem Street. Married yet, but nobody knows for sure. And nobody cares for sure. Ooh, there you are. Come on. point of buying expensive dresses if you don't stand up straight. Remember, don't breathe too deeply. Bye. Hey, I haven't forgotten you. Well, look who's here. Glad to see you, boy. This party sure needs you. Spider. All right, pipe down. Stop slobbering all over me. Go on back to the dance. Mingle. Sure, anything for a friend. Chad Carnes, Liz Erickson. Mr. Carnes is our wine steward. Suppose I won't see you again tonight. You see that door? Uh-huh. Let's dance to it. Don't you think we'd better stay out there? Oh, that? Don't worry. That's not on the agenda for tonight. Get two glasses out of the cupboard, will you? I'm not aging it, just uh, hiding it from the fraternity brothers. Just a little. Well, that's all you're going to get, a little. This stuff's expensive. Well, to what? Why to anything? I was just thinking, only yesterday I was a child, and here I am, drinking out of a garbage can. Well, you're growing up. What are you looking so grim about? I got stood up. Well, that's pretty awful, huh? Well, I'm not supposed to get stood up. I've got a reputation. The news got out, it killed my roommate. Well, at least you can laugh about it. 
Who's laughing? What am I doing telling the truth to you? It's just something about me. People can't lie to me. Maybe I'm different. Well, I want you to change. I want you to act like Mary, talk like Marge, and dress just like Dallas. And then I'll be able to lie to you with the greatest of ease. Who have you been dating? Joe Blake. Do you know him? Yeah, I know him. Don't you like him? What's wrong with him? Well, there's nothing wrong with him, and I don't like him. Well, you'll have to be a little clearer than that. Well, he has a quiet superior air. Joe has every right. He is superior. Well, he might be a little noisier about it so we could have something on him. I bet he hasn't told you a thing about his war record. Just that he was in it. Uh, there you are. Herbal art, two silver stars. He never says a word about it. That I can't stand. Uh, I was a Navy flyer. Oh? Shot down 11 zeros. Got the Navy cross. I sound off about it all the time. Why shouldn't you? It's the truth. Truth is, one month at Pensacola was all I ever had. I just reached 17, the war ended. I can see right now you and I are not going to get along because I can't stand having anybody around me I have to tell the truth to all the time. I put this back in the vault and turn you over to the mob. You want it on the phone, sire. Thanks. <laughs> It was all a mistake, wasn't it? You're not being stood up after all. How do you know? You couldn't hear me on the phone. Oh, I can tell by the way you're putting on your coat. Salem Street. <laughs> hey, is there anything you don't know? You're really quite a gal. You know, I ought to stay here with you. Why don't you? You don't really want to go to Salem Street. No, I don't. But that's the worst part in having a reputation. You've got to live up to it. So long. <laughs> Nice view. You yeah, want a view by a postcard. I'm trying to concentrate. Who'd you ask, Sid? Alan Burdick. Hey, I was going to ask him. You could have consulted me. That's now Sal who's trying to concentrate. Anybody got the time? It's 2 30 almost. He got it. I've got a 3 o'clock exam. That's for luck. I don't need luck. I need somebody smart sitting next to me. Shut up. Gesundheit. You shut up, too. Hey, I've got the most marvelous idea. I'm going to write all my notes out on Kleenex. And I'll sneeze every time I need them. Marge, what do you think of this idea? I'll write all my notes on Kleenex. Well, oh, that's the oldest gag in college history. Gee, I thought I was a pioneer. I didn't know I'm going to flunk, Marge. Gee, relax. We don't expect any of you girls to be Phi Beta Kappa. We just want you to get nice, comfortable grades so we don't have to depledge you. Incidentally, let's take five minutes break. Mm. Some of you girls haven't put down your dates yet, and we have to send out the invitations right away. I'm expecting an answer real soon. Really? Oh, good. Oh, Liz, maybe you can explain this to me. You've got Joe Blake's name down, and then it's crossed out, and then you've got Chad's name down, and then Chad's name's crossed out. What are you doing, tossing a coin? Just about. Well, who's it going to be, for heaven's sakes? You can't be serious about Joe. Sure, sure it is, Joe. Well, I've known him longer than I have Chad. With a big-time operator like Chad chasing you all over the campus, and you prefer Joe. I don't get it. Look, Liz, I've been meaning to talk to you. You're a frosh, and you don't know the ropes. We... Well, we don't like to interfere, but, well, all the other fellows are going to be fraternity men. Joe wouldn't feel at home. He, he'd be uncomfortable. Now, Chad... Oh, Chad's fun. He's exciting to be with. I, I love dating him, but I don't know. There's something about him. Anyway, Joe, I, I feel so warm and comfortable with him. You could say the same for a camel's hair coat. And while we're on the subject of clothes, does Joe own a tuxedo? It's formal, you know. Joe, I just bet he doesn't. Anyway, he can rent one, can't he? Well, that's all the five pies that have to hear. A rented tuxedo. Thanks, Marge. Thanks for making up my mind for me. Let me have 
another look at your notes before we go. Oh, you know me and what? I got things to show you. I've been buying out Simonson's. Have you got a minute? I can't now. I'm doing Hyler Hall to bone with Adelaide. Oh. Let's do it tonight. Wonderful. Wait till you see the creation I got for the Christmas dance. Golly, Ruth, Simonson's, they're so expensive. How on earth are you ever going to pay for them? Well, I thought I'd get a job during Christmas vacation. Oh, honey, you know very well you can't make enough in three weeks. But I have to have a new dress for that dance. What would Dallas say if oh, I went Ruth, there and... Please believe me. You're pressing too hard. Just new clothes won't make, won't make Dallas accept you. It'd be so much better if you'd just be yourself. Tell me something, man to man, have you got a date for the dance? No. I wrote to some of the boys at home. Oh, oh honey, a new dress for a dance you haven't even got a date for. Oh, don't worry. I'll get you a date. Would you, Liz? Oh, gee, that'd be wonderful. Thanks. Thanks. Oh. Ah, just the person I came to see. What are you doing here? On the way to my French exam, I'm calling on all my friends and asking them to pray for me. I'll be glad to if you promise to say a few words for me on my math. Oh, it's a deal. Uh, still have about half an hour. How about coming down to the jug room and having a Coke with me? Can't. I'm on my way to Adelaide's to study. Whom are you trying to impress? Einstein? <laughs> what are you doing tonight? Same thing, studying like mad. Honest, I'm not dating anybody until exams are over. My dear girl, you are taking a liberal arts course, not the veil. Come on, I'll walk you up to Hyler Hall. You ought to spend that time studying. You know, it's too bad I can't take that exam for you. French is my best subject. Mm, wish you could. Uh, the French, they are a funny race. Also, their irregular verbs drive me crazy. <laughs> Oh, I wish I had nerve enough to take these notes to class with Why don't you write them on Kleenex? Marge Colby says that's an old gag. Say, there's a girl down the hall who claims she sneezed her way right through her sophomore year. <laughs> Gee, it's quiet around here. It's a wonderful place to study. Well, it's study hour. Isn't it quiet over at your place, study hour? Oh, everybody's always telling everybody else to keep quiet, and that makes for quite a hubbub. Yeah. Oops, I guess we spoke too soon. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah, just a second. It's for you, Liz. That character Chad Carnes tracked you down over here. Well, that's impossible. I spoke to him not an hour ago. Hey, he's supposed to be in the middle of a French exam. Maybe, but he spoke to me in faultless English. Thanks. Chad, where are you? The jug room. What about your exam? Don't tell me you finished that quickly. Liz, I've got to see you. Come right down. Oh, Chad, I'm right in the middle of studying. Oh, look, I'm not kidding. It's very important. All right, I'll be right down. Took one look at the exam questions. I knew I was a dead pigeon. How long can you look at the ceiling? So I ended in a practically empty blue book, and I came down here. Then I, uh, I got the idea. What idea? Didn't you just tell me you were a prize student in French? Oh, it was good, not exactly prize. Oh, here's a copy of the exam questions. How do they look to you? Mm, not too hard. I, I bought another blue book. I thought if we could go someplace, you could fill in the answers for me. Well, most of them anyway, and then I'll still have an hour before the exam's officially through. Well, good luck to you. You've already handed in your blue book. Sure, but when the exam's over, the prof will take the blue books to his office. Now, I don't know how just yet, but if, if I can get my old blue book out of the pile and my new one in... Gee, Chad, it sounds awfully risky. Well, what have I got to lose? Well, so I'm caught, I'm thrown out of school a few days earlier. <laughs> yeah, but what a way to go. What's the matter? Scruples? No, not exactly. Oh, look, Liz, we're not blazing any new paths or anything. Everybody cheats, you know that. So maybe a few spooks. I'll admit my little scheme hasn't been tried before. It'll certainly take guts. I can't, Chad. I guess it's just a case of half scared, half Indiana conscience. Look, Liz, 
I'm more scared about this thing than you are. Ah, I've just got to graduate, that's all. Oh, I know, I was flip a while ago about flunking out, but, oh, believe me, it, it's the most important thing in the world to me right now. He said I'd never make it, never in a million years, and I've got to show him. Who? Oh, my father. All my life, he's been riding me. He calls me his remittance man, and then he laughs. He's got the nastiest laugh. You know, if you just yell at me, but all he does is laugh. How will your mother take it? My mother or my father's wife? You mean they're not one and the same? Uh, this is my father's third wife since my mother. <laughs> I doubt if she has a long-term contract. Where is your mother? No, I don't know. I think she's living in Pasadena someplace. Oh, gee, you sound as if you never see her. Hmm. Sure I do. <laughs> Once a year in the, in the newsreels on a Rose Bowl float. <sighs> Oh, look, Liz, if I flunk out now, I, I, I just couldn't go home and face my father. I, I, I just, I just couldn't. <laughs> that must sound like a grade A crybaby. Oh, forget it. All right, I, I don't graduate, I don't get a degree. Harry Truman never went to college. You want another Coke? Waiter. All right, Chad, I'll do it, but we'll have to hurry. Uh, never mind. Look, Liz, I'll say this again. You can still back out. I never intended to get you in this deep. You got through with your exam pretty early, didn't you? <laughs> well, I was surprised myself. <laughs> Just showed you what a little boning will do. Uh, may I present Miss Erickson, Professor Benson? How do you do? How do you do? Miss Erickson wanted to meet you, sir. She's going to France this summer, and, well, she doesn't want to see the usual tourist stuff. She'd like to see the real France. I told her you'd be a big help. I'm not much interested in the Apache or the Folie Berger, and I don't want to spend all my time in the Louvre. Well, I never saw an Apache, but I did get to the Folie Berger. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard so much about Brittany, but I haven't the faintest idea where it is. Matter of fact, I spent a whole summer there on my sabbatical. Oh. A delightful place. There, you can see where it is on the map. On the coast, facing England. Oh, yes. You'll find the Bretons difficult people to get to know. But once you know them... Oh, well, what about accommodations? Uh, primitive, I hear. Oh, no, not primitive. Simple would be more like it. I'd advise you to stay away from the inns. Find a nice French family. They'll practically adopt you. Uh, where do I go from Brittany? What about uh, northern France, the Low Countries? Yes, but I've always found the South more interesting. Oh, I don't mean the Riviera. <laughs> That's not for a professor's pocketbook. <laughs> I'm talking about the Basque Country. Oh, I always thought the Basque Country was Spanish. Oh, no, no. There's a French portion. You can see it right here on the map. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Say, this could go on for hours. Oh, yes, I, I must be keeping you, Professor. That's all right. Uh, Professor Benson, I was wondering if you and Mrs. Benson would like to come over to the house for dinner some night next week. And Liz, too. <laughs> then you could really enlighten us about France. We'd be delighted, Garns. Well, thank you so much, Professor, and, and I'll be looking forward to that. Goodbye. It was very nice meeting you. <laughs> Goodbye, Garns. Goodbye, sir. All of a sudden, I, I can't stop trembling. I'm going to see to it that everybody at the house knows what you've done for me. I don't care what you say. This will really launch. You're talking like a child. It's just plain, ordinary treating. That's all it is, and I don't like it. Don't mind Mary, Liz. She has to make a noise like the head of a house. Now get this through your head, Dallas. Liz has got to realize what a serious thing this is. The girls have been thrown out of our house for a lot less. She's a hero over at the Lambda House. Do you know what one of them said? What? He said, 
She's got the looks, she's got the right sorority connections, and when the grapevine gets going on this little episode, she's a cinch for Queen of the Frosh Frolic. Queen of the Frosh Frolic? Golly, what did I do? She asked what she did. A thing like this brings attention to you, and that means votes. And that should show you the difference between men. I can just picture Joe having enough nerve to do a thing like this. Nerve? It doesn't require nerve. It just requires a lack of character. Oh, ye gods, Mary, we haven't had a frosh queen since 41. Of course, what just bowls me over is Marge and Dallas acting as if I swam the channel or something. Do you get that? Sure, I get it. Some people, cheating's a major sport. You've just earned your letter. I don't know if I'm crazy about your attitude. I'm sorry, it's the only attitude I have. You know me, one suit, one attitude. There you go, condescending again, being so quietly superior. <laughs> you have no idea how hard I try to feel inferior. It's just no use. You needn't be so sarcastic. Sorry. And you needn't be so smug. We're not the only ones that go in for cheating, you know. Adelaide told Look, me that over... I know sororities have a monopoly on cheating. Maybe I'd like to try it but I'm a pre-med. I'd only be cheating myself. Guess you think I'm pretty much of a heel, don't you? Didn't say that. You're thinking it. No, I don't think you're a heel. But I don't think you're Eleanor Roosevelt, either. To think of the way I've been defending you. Why, they've been hounding me for months, and, and I've been standing up for you. Beginning to think Marge and all the others are right. You're just a smug, stuffy... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just because your conscience is bothering you, and you have to start exploding in some direction. Don't take it out on me. Why, you're not even in med school yet, and already you're a big psychoanalyst. You know everything that's wrong with you. I was feeling so excited and happy. You have to come along and throw cold water on me. You, why, why, you're the most... Why, you haven't even got a tuxedo. Oh. <laughs> well, that just about sums me up, I think. I haven't even got a tuxedo. Oh, Liz! Yes? Tad's on the phone. He's holding on. You'd better go. You better not keep raffles waiting. Why, you... I'll tell you one thing, though. I'd never do it again. My life of crime is over. My only regret is I've waited till my senior year to dream up this little system. Think of the years I've wasted studying. May I ask you something? All that time in Professor Benson's office, weren't you frightened? Here I go, telling you the truth again. Yes, I was frightened. You didn't show it one bit. I was afraid for you, too. I tell you again how grateful I am. But I was serious once today, and that's my quota for the month. I, I'm supposed to be boning on math. Oh, take a certified public accountant to concentrate on math on a night like this. How do you say, once again, in French? Encore, s'il vous plaît. Like you said. As you said. <laughs> well, what do you know? I can't speak English either. Maybe it's not us. Maybe it's just the excitement of today. No, Maybe we just... No, this is way overdue. This should have happened a long time before. Oh, gee, Jeff. I'm not just another Salem Street, am I? Oh, don't be silly. You don't give your pen to Salem Street. You know, some girls say that getting a boy's pin doesn't mean a thing. Others think it means you're engaged or something. Well, I guess it means you're engaged to be engaged. It means that someday, if you pass your math and don't put on weight, I might ask you to be my first wife. I think my father'd be flattered if I followed his pattern. <laughs> oh, now, look, it's not that fun. I was just thinking how happy this is going to make Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> Listen closely, listen well, and I will tell you something swell. A love that happens swish, bang, slam. A try you to be and her handsome lamb. He looked at her and in a whiz, Chad Carnes had pinned our own dear Liz. Chad Carnes is a phase you just gotta go through, my sweet. But you'll grow out of it. Depend on Casey, always the right word for the right occasion. Oh, that was so much fun. Here's to our Lizzie, our Lizzie's so gay. Here's to our Lizzie, she's with us today. She got him, she got him, he can't get away. Here's to our Lizzie, she's with us today. <laughs> Oh,
to sigh. Ba, ba, lambs to sigh. The lambs are coming over, looking for some clover. If there is no clover, then the lambs will cry. Ba, ba, lambs to sigh. Ba, ba, lambs What is it? Sigh. The lambs are coming. What is it, folks? They're coming to serenade you. It's the custom when they pin one of our girls. Then Chad gives you a white lamb rose. Dallas, put the lights out. by any other name, still smells of alcohol. Listen, dear, I went through Hell Week, your father went through Hell Week, and thousands before us and after us. I know the things they make you do sound silly, but the whole thing has a purpose. What purpose? Well, I suppose it's a final test of character and, well, integrity before they initiate you. They want to find out what a good sport you are. Those things are important, dear, and besides, the whole thing's a lot of fun. Well, speaking of being initiated, will you ask Dad to send me $100 for the initiation fee? Of course, dear. You'll have to send Liz a check for $100 to cover her initiation. Ye gods. Just when she stops being deductible, she starts piling up expenses. He says he'll put it in the mail tonight, dear. Uh, Minions, the royal court of Upsilon, Upsilon, Upsilon requires your lowly presence. You shall henceforth be known as lowly ones. You will announce this name in a loud voice whenever and wherever you encounter a sister. Enter the house only by the back door, bowing three times to all sisters with one hand on your lowly head and the other on your heart. Look neither to the right nor to the left. Be of true heart and no harm will befall you. But should you disobey any sister during this week of trial, Sisterhood will never be yours, and surely goodness and mercy will forever forsake you. Beware!
the whole darn block, at least half a mile, my back will be broken. I gotta go to the graveyard and copy the names, dates, and epitaphs off a hundred tombstones. I don't think you'd better. You've been at this harder than anybody else, and there's still four days to go. No, they gave me a job. I'm gonna do it. I don't like the way you look. You feel warm. I bet you've got fever, a lot of fever. No, I'm just tired and excited. I gotta rush or I'll never get it done. piece of business on the agenda, our grand pledge mistress, will tell us what she's planned for the pledges tonight. I'm sending Sue to count all the bricks in Rec Hall. I've got something cute for Flossie. At two in the morning, she's to go to the Kappa Theta house and awaken our noble football captain and obtain from him one pair of his garters and two pair of his underwear shorts. <laughs> and now for our prize package, Ruthie. She's to go to every house from 4th to 11th Street and get the name of every occupant. Oh, Mary. Yes, Dallas. I don't think it's fair to give Ruth such a tough task. What I mean is this. Well, I know we don't vote on the girls finally until Friday night. <laughs> Gee, well, you all know what my attitude was when we pledged Ruth. And, well, that miracle hasn't happened. She's still the same Ruth. Gosh, I think she's improved. Oh, come now, let's be honest. I defy any of you, even Casey, to... By the way, where is Casey? Make a note, Casey fined 50 cents for missing meeting. Yes, I defy even Casey to say that Ruth is good enough to be a triu. Now, believe me, kids, I've given this a lot of thought, lost sleep over it, but I'm going to blackball Ruth. Oh, come now, let's be honest with ourselves. How many of you really want Ruth for a sorority sister? There you are. Over half the girls don't want her. And it only takes one black ball. Gee, it's, it's so cruel. Well, isn't it more cruel to wait until Friday to tell her? I don't think it's right to let Ruth go through three more days of hell week agony and torture. She looks all beat now. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's fair. Let's do the decent thing and tell her now. That's all I have to say. Gosh, I'm glad I won't have to tell her. Well, that'll be up to little me. I'll have to think of something. All right, Marge, might as well get on with the list. Hope they take it easy on us tonight. I'm all in. But I'm freezing. Freezing? I'm perspiring. If you haven't got a fever, I'll all be right, fine. All right, all right. I'll take my temperature after I'm initiated. <gasps> all right, lowly ones, here are your assignments for tonight. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, Where did they give you a honey? Oh, no. Okay, get going. Ruth! Come here. Mary wants to speak to you a minute. Lonely Ruth Gates reporting. No, no pledge nonsense. It's just Ruthie and Mary between us now. Oh, thank you, Mary. Sit down, dear. Will you have a Coke? No, thanks. I've got to rush off to my assignment. Oh, there's no particular rush on that. Ruthie, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Have you been happy here? I mean, really happy with us. Oh, yes. I've never been so happy in my life. Well, what I mean is... Initiations in a few days, and, well, it's so important that your sorority sisters are the kind of girls you'd want 
for friends the rest of your life. It's so important. Oh, I know. Of course, you can't be crazy about all the girls. And all the girls can't be crazy about you. But I've been so happy here. Honestly, I've been in a daze ever since I've been pledged. Well, there have been cases, you know, of pledges. When they felt they were in the wrong group, well, they had the good sense to hand their pins in. And I must say, I admire that kind of courage. And I want to say right here and now, that if you felt that way, I mean about handing your pin in, well, I'd understand perfectly, and there'd be absolutely no hard feelings. No. I wouldn't want to quit. I want to be a triune more than anything else in the world. What's wrong, Mary? Ruthie, I'm afraid I have some bad news. I understand you've run up some big bills at Simonson's. They've reported it to the Dean of Women, and we've received a communication from her. And under the circumstances, we have such finicky bylaws and all. Well, Ruth, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask for your pin. But, Mary, I'll pay them. It's just a question of a little time. No, it isn't that. Well, some of the girls feel it's a black mark against the house. I wish there was something I could do, but my hands are tied. But now we don't want you to feel like a stranger. Well, we'd like you to come to dinner sometimes. We'd so love to see you. I gotta go to Fourth Street, get names. Oh, no, you don't have to do that now. You look so tired. Why don't you go to bed and get a good night's rest? And now there's absolutely no rush about your moving out. You'll find a place in a few days. What's the matter? You lost? Why, hello, Joe. Hello. What are you doing up so late? Hell Week stuff? Yeah, little job to do. Did you get much sleep this week? Not much. Well, you look awfully good. That is, for Hell Week. <laughs> I haven't seen you since... When was it? The middle of December? Mm, first week in December. Uh, I didn't get to wish you a Merry Christmas, did I? No, and it's it's a little late for that now. Uh, happy, happy Ides of March. Thanks. As a matter of fact, I, I did catch a glimpse of you the other day, but I was wearing a ridiculous 1890 bathing suit. With and a I... parasol. You saw me? Yes, and I saw you see me. Well, thanks for not letting me see that you saw me see <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I, I'm glad to see you, Joe. Honest. Sure, I know how it is. Any friendly face during Hell Week. That Chad's pen? Yeah. A little belated, but my insincerest congratulations. My insincerest thanks. So much for Chad. Now, what's your target for tonight? Well, I, I've got to get to Cloverdale, and they made sure the buses aren't running, and get this postcard signed by the head nurse at the hospital, and then get back home somehow. <laughs> That's all I have to do. Eh, you can get out of doing all that. How? Oh. Walk me down the street. I'll do it a party at a friend of mine. Jack Gruber, do you know him? No. But tell me, how do I get out of going to Cloverdale? And you hand in your pen. Oh, Joe. Or you sign the nurse's name yourself. They won't know the difference. Then you can go to the party with me. Not the top-notch people, of course, but there'll be music and something to eat. How about it? Oh, I can't, Joe. I really can't. Well, it's too bad. Well, here we are. They look cozy and warm in there. Oil heat. I really should get started. It's such a long way. Why, there are Casey and Adelaide. Where? Well, they seem to be having quite a time with themselves, don't they? Gosh, I haven't seen Adelaide for ages. 
Well, that's the way it goes. Don't always mean to. Sometimes lose track of friends. Maybe if I went in for just a few minutes. Said hello to Adelaide. Great. Let's go. Hi, Jack. Well, hi, Joe. Liz, this is your host, Jack Gruber. Hello, Liz. Hi. I was going to bring a bottle of wine, but brought her instead. Oh. Well, it's all right by me. We'll keep her at room temperature. Huh? What's this desertion? Yeah, it's part of Hell Week. They're forcing her to mix with non-fraternity folks. You won't give me away, will you, Casey? Give you away? I'm proud of you, my girl. Everybody, hey! This is Liz Erickson. Hello, In three days, she becomes a sorority sister of mine, so please be kind to her and avoid the subject. <laughs> Liz! Say, aren't you at the wrong water hole? Oh, Ed, this is wonderful. Honestly, I've been meaning to come down and see you. Honey, the road to Heiner Hall is paved with good intentions. <laughs> yeah, don't send a girl to do a man's job. Time's up. Come on, I'll put you back on the road to Cloverdale. You're doing nothing of the kind. I'm having too good a time. <laughs> yeah, now, where are you going to put anybody else? <laughs> oh, hello there. Hiya. It was Liz Erickson. Why, Chad, what are you doing here? More important, what are you doing here? Having wonderful time. Wish you were here. Side splitting. Now, get your coat and let's get out of here. Oh, wait a minute. How'd you know I was here? One of our pledges saw you. Now, will you get hey, your coat? Hey, what a system you have over at your place. Did the girls give you an assignment to do tonight? Oh, uh, honey. <laughs> Did you carry it out? No, I didn't. Why not? Because I told her not to. Liz, are you crazy? Three days before initiation? Well, you come with me and maybe we can smooth it over. You go to Mary and you tell her you're sorry. Yes, and then I might try going to Professor Benson and telling him I'm sorry that I... What's that got to do with it? If you haven't got guts enough to go through Hell Week just because it's tough, if you haven't got the integrity, just... You talking about integrity? Maybe I'm no one to talk after helping you cheat, but you're just the fellow to preach integrity. Wait a minute, Liz. You have to try to understand his sense of values. <laughs> they may be a bit peculiar. Look, you, can... don't think I'm scared just because I'm surrounded by you and your... friend. Oh, shut up, Chad. Shut up, shut up. Were you acting like a silly, empty, overblown kid? All right. How I was ever taken Take your hands by off of them. <laughs> That's enough of that. Everybody's acting like kids. You're coming with me? No, I'm not. Okay. Stay. You seem very much at home here. Well, lucky you've got a wine red rug. The uh, blood won't show. I want to tell my children I felt this good right arm. As a matter of fact, I think it was a left of the chin. Swell, and I get a chance to touch him again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Liz. Gosh, I'm overdressed. Window seven more times and I can go to sleep. How did you do? All right. Ruth, get back in. I don't know. Say, there's something funny going on in the house. All the sisters are up, a lot of buzzing in the rooms. Whatever it is, it can't be good for us. Lolly, Vivian, Brooks. Never mind. Liz, Chad called. He said to tell you he was sorry for behaving like a louse. Please apologize to everyone for him and he'll see you tomorrow night. What's it all about, Liz? Oh, nothing. Uh, Liz, while you were out, you didn't happen to run into Ruth, did you? No, but she had a long assignment. Mm-hmm. What's with her worrying about Ruth? No one around here ever worries about Ruth. Lowly, Marsha, and Mildred. Marsha, you didn't happen to run across Ruth tonight, did you? No, I've been down at the garbage dump. Mary? 
Excuse me, Mary. I couldn't help noticing that you were worried about Ruth. She wasn't feeling well when she left on her assignment. Well, I, I told her she didn't have to go on the assignment. I told her to get a good night's sleep. But her bed hasn't been slept and it hasn't been touched. I know. That's why I'm worried. She really looks so... Oh, well, you girls will know soon enough. We had a meeting and we decided to... Well, it, it was the toughest thing I, I've ever had to do. What, Mary? I had to tell her she was to pledge. To pledge? But why? Oh, well, we, we can't discuss it now. We've, we've got to find her. She had such a strange look on her face. Nope. Only two passengers all night. Both men. What was Ruth's assignment tonight, do oh, you know? some silly thing. Get all names, numbers, 4th to 11th streets. But Mary told us she didn't I've have I've got a to. crazy idea. We've tried every place else. Come on. Good oh. afternoon. 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, and no sign of her. I told you she wouldn't. Wait a minute. Over there. Isn't that somebody on the steps? What's the matter? Ruthie, look at me. Maybe if I get the names. I oh. Liz. Liz, they've done it. They've depledged me. Liz, they've depledged me. Liz. Liz. She's a very sick girl. We've got to get to the infirmary right away. How is she? They're taking x-rays. Oh, this is just awful. That poor girl. Where's the doctor? In there. Well, I'd better go speak to her. Oh, what a strange girl that Ruthie is. Mary was so nice to her. She begged her to go to bed. Then she slips out. Oh, I've been terribly worried. Everyone at the house is so upset. My stomach's turning off. Mary, I don't understand. Three days before initiation. Why did you depletch her? How could you do a thing like that? I'll wait outside, Liz. Well, you know the feeling there was about Ruth. Now, personally, I think she's the sweetest... Oh, but Mary, if you could have seen her face. I know you don't like her, Dallas, but she was so happy at the house. She tried so hard. It meant so much to her to be a triune. I just don't understand how you could do this to her. Now, really, Liz, you're still a pledge. We can't discuss these things with you. We had no choice, Liz. We received word from the dean. Ruth has run up some big bills she can't pay. And that reflects seriously on the house. But, Mary, you know I'm in the same fix. I've been running your bills at Simonson's, too. Now, look, Liz. I hate to be saying this with Ruthie so sick inside. But there is a big difference between you and Ruth. We can overlook some things in your case. Oh, I see. You have one set of rules for the girls you want. Another for the ones you don't. Say, what's gotten into you? Are you sick, too? I don't know whether I care for that sort of thing. I don't know whether I care for it at all. Apparently, you don't even care for the idea of being a try you. Now, Dallas, she said nothing of the kind. No, I didn't say that. I never even thought. What has gotten into you, Liz? The doctor says it's pneumonia. Not too bad. She's going to be all right. Oh, thank heavens. We'll send her flowers first thing in the morning, Dallas. Yeah, sure. I'll take care of it myself. Oh, what a load off my mind. Listen, let's all go back to the house and have some hot chocolate. I second the motion. A cup of chocolate, a good night's sleep, and you'll be able to think more clearly again. I'm pretty clear right now, Mary. Will you please tell me, Liz, what is the matter? Something's been bothering me for a long time. I never quite knew what it was. Now I know. I'm afraid, Mary, I can't live up to try you ideals. Well, what's but that, dear? Deal? What are our ideals? With just being good friends and helping each other and, uh... and charity work. Don't forget that. Look, haven't you had a lot of fun? Met a lot of fraternity men? Aren't you going to be frosh queen? You're all upset about poor Ruth. I understand. We all are, dear. But how is this going to look for the chapter? We'll be the laughing stock of the campus. According to our records, the Triu pledge hasn't turned in her pin since 1939. And she was kind of funny to begin with. Maybe she wasn't. Maybe she was a nice girl with the wrong kind of figure for clothes. I'm beginning to lose patience with you. Liz, dear, have you thought what this is going to do to your mother? 
You can't just think of yourself. You've got to think of your mother, too. How much your being a triu means to her. You ask your mother what it means being a sorority girl after you leave college, professionally and socially. If you wear a triu pin, you'll always find the right kind of friends, no matter where you live. There are many wonderful things about sororities, but the friendships you make, the real, true friendships, that's the most beautiful part. Where would I be today? What sort of life would I have if I hadn't been a triu? I have a wonderful idea. Well, naturally, I'm not talking for the rest of the girls, but I'm sure they'll feel the same way as I do. Supposing we take Ruth back in, how would that be? That's a wonderful idea, Mary. We'll hold a special initiation ceremony for her, the night after she gets out of the infirmary. Now, wait a minute. We went through this Oh, let day. Ruth wear the pin. Who cares? Nobody even has to know we depledged her. Ruth will be a triu. How does that sound to you, Liz? Oh, I can just see her face. When she'll be the happy... It won't work for Ruthie, it won't work for me. A lot of things you've said are true, Mother Clark. There are good things about sororities, but it's not enough to make up for the people they hurt. And I don't like what's happened to me. I, I was so anxious to be a member, I let Janet Shaw leave school. Found myself preferring people like Chad Carnes to Joe Blake. I thought it was smart to cheat. I even thought it was important to be Frosh Queen. One thing you are right about, though, Ruthie. She doesn't belong at the Triu house, where she'll be merely tolerated. Where she can wear the pin, and who cares? Ruthie belongs at Hyler Hall, where she won't be judged by what she wears, but by what she is. Ruthie doesn't need to be tolerated. She needs to be wanted. Your pledge pin. I guess this is just my night for losing jewelry. Did you quit or did they throw you out? I quit. And they'll say they threw you out. And it's a perfect arrangement. Everyone's face is safe. Now what? Thought I'd double up with Adelaide for tonight. Good. I'll walk you up. In the morning, I'll see if I can find a room at Hyler Hall for Ruthie and me. Remember Janet Shaw? She got such a kick listening to old Main Bell. Gosh, that seems a long time ago. Well, it's a long time ago, and you've come a long way. How about dinner tomorrow night? Sure. Dutch, of course. Now what's your problem? I was just thinking about telling my mother. We have to be so careful the way we break things to her. <laughs> well, Liz, our mothers have to grow up too, you know. <laughs> 